Hi friends, Drew here at Traditions at Longwood in Unionville, Pennsylvania. A customer called us because they had some water coming in through their front door and found a couple deficiencies in the house wrap and the flashing around the top of the door, around the bottom of the door, bumps in the J-channel, around the light blocks. So we found some obvious things that we could fix and we gave them an agreement to do that and said we'll see what else we find once we get into that. So let's take you up and show you what we got into so far. So the way the house wrap was set up, there was nothing that really prevented it. There's just a tar paper on here. It was running down right behind the uh, uh, trim product here. And there's nothing that was keeping the water out. They did have some flashing on there, but it wasn't secured, wasn't adhered, and the, the layers weren't lapped right over that. Um, so the first thing our guys did is they knifed through the tar paper, and I talked to you about that in another video where somebody didn't do that and why I would have preferred they did. So our guys knifed through the tar paper, they tucked the Tyvek house wrap up behind this, brought it out, and then taped that seam. Uh, but any water that got down, if it gets behind the tape, it's still gonna be in front of the Tyvek. It's still gonna come out the bottom. So here. Uh, we've got some window flashing tape helping to seal what's going on here. And um, we may look at doing something else as far as trying to layer one more piece over this. We had one more major deficiency up here. And uh, this piece of metal, how it was set, uh, I didn't get a full understanding of exactly where this was. Michael said the way this was set up, any water that got on here was pretty much funneled right into the house, which is going to explain the water damage that they had shown us up inside the window here. So that's probably where that was coming from. So we're pretty confident. Uh, that that's going to solve that piece of things. And then we can put the metal back down on there. Um, we've got J-channel that's curved here. They've got their curved aluminum trim on the other side. Now, the other piece that we found is when that curved aluminum trim came down, it did not wind up in front of this J-channel. It was behind the J-channel. Um, but then we noticed this. When you follow that J-channel all the way to the bottom, what do you see? Down here at the bottom, that J-channel is pumping all the water that hits the siding and gets over here straight down into the bottom where this last piece of J-channel is. We're told uh, from the homeowners, the paver patio was, was glued down right on top of the existing cement stoop and that they didn't bother taking any of the siding apart. I, I guess landscapers aren't uh, exterior guys. Um, and so now they've got this, this hole, this void, this, this funnel back here. Any water that gets in there is going into the house. It's got nowhere else to go. So how do we fix it? Well, we're gonna fill that up with uh, cement and then we're going to put a piece of L flashing down out onto the top of the stone and then we'll bring our house wrap down over that and then we can J channel and do some different things. I'll show you over here. So see how they've got this piece of metal cap? Well that's what we want. We want a piece of L metal that comes down and then out about an inch onto those pavers to protect that mortar joint that we're going to create from any water being able to get down in there and go down and stuck and get living in that in that hole that's underneath. So. So if we were gonna do this from scratch, and the customer actually asked me that question, if we were gonna ask, what would we have done differently? Rule number one, before you put a cement paver, any kind of patio on the front of your house, up against vinyl siding, up against stucco, up against any of those that are stop, just stop right there. And let's look and see how the house wrap system is set up, how the moisture drain is set up. Let's take the case of stucco. Usually there's a rain screed back there. There's a, a, a spot for space for moisture to be able to get through if it was built after 2004, 2005, prior to that, who knows what they did. Um, but let's say you just throw your, your deck in front of it. Well, when that moisture gets to the bottom of that rain channel that's behind now your new brand new cement steps that your landscaper put into you while he was you know raking your leaves or doing what else they were doing, putting your gardens in, where's that water gonna go? Is it trapped behind the stairs? Let's take the case of this vinyl siding. Any water that gets behind any of these pieces of vinyl siding on either side, if the water gets back there and it comes down the face of that house wrap, and even in the case of back here, when it gets down the behind there and it's two inches below the top of this patio, where's it gonna go? It's a bad, 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 bad situation. So you need to have an exterior guy come in and take the siding apart if your landscaper is not comfortable doing that. Your hardscape crew or whoever it is that you've hired to put your patio in. We need to, to remove the siding. We need to put some sort of a barrier down. I like ice and water shield is one of my favorite products, especially if we get the rubberized stuff that's really solid. We run that down, right? And then we can look at the whole process of where the flash rings are gonna go. But generally speaking, you've got an ice and water shield up against the wood of your house, adhered to the wood of the house. And then perhaps the paver patio system, whatever it is, they're gonna adhere, you know, ones up right up against that product. And then when you get to the top of that, now you need to start the flashing system where you're coaxing that water to the outside. Is there a piece of L flashing there that's coming out? Is your house wrap going over that? 
or any of your J channels or other flashing other things is everything sequenced so as water comes down it keeps getting pushed to the front keeps getting pushed to the front keeps getting pushed yeah. until it's out in front and on top of your finished product when you're done if you don't do that you're asking for problems we've already once this year had a customer had to have his landscaper come back tear apart the uh, giant slate uh you know, like granite steps that they had put in landscaper pulled out apart we had to rip out stucco uh, get the moisture barriers in, get it layered in correctly to the whole rest of the house, and then once our stuff was finished, the hardscaper landscaper came back, put those cement stairs, uh, those big huge stone steps back in place, reformed everything, and then we brought siding and J-channel and flashing and all those pieces around that to make it pretty. But too many times what we're seeing is homeowners are, are, are letting their hardscape guys come through and just throw up a set of stairs and they're not taking into account the rest of the rain management system that's a part of your house on the exterior and it's causing them problems because you're trapping water inside and in this case two inches down and the only way it has to go is into that wood in your basement or wicking up the wood and across your subfloor so it's causing problems here we're going to take a couple steps to fix it instead of the one day we thought we were going to be on this we're probably going to be two more taking these two sides apart digging everything out getting all that old sand out of there and then uh, getting some sort of solid product in there. We're thinking hydraulic cement. We're set to see what the temperatures are gonna do, if that's gonna work for us, and get something back in there and then reinstall the siding correctly. So that would be my recommendation. If you're thinking about getting a set of stairs put on your house or any kind of exterior stone feature like this, ask that contractor how they're going to treat the exterior of your home and the existing moisture barrier system that is allowing water to escape at the bottom. If they don't have a good answer, it's time for you to call somebody else or at least have a second contractor involved in making sure the waterproofing is done correctly before those guys do their work. And that usually means stripping off all of the old exterior products, getting down to your OSB, putting your ice and water shield in, holding, folding up the current moisture barrier and pulling that up and out of the way, letting those guys do their work, and then coming back and doing all the flashings correctly and making it a team effort. If we can help you solve a problem at your house, there is nothing that we don't do Roofing, siding, windows, doors, decks, kitchens, remodels, basement finishing, uh, bathroom renovations, whatever it is that our team can help you with. We have dedicated office staff ready to answer your phone calls, whether it's for a new addition, a new custom dream house, or building you a garage at 484-748-0008. Please choose option two for Cope Built, your full service construction and renovation company, and extension two for new projects. We are a registered Pennsylvania Home Improvement Contractor number 88078. Remember, when we're finished with your project, you're proud to say it's not just done. It was coat built. We'll catch you guys in another video. Thanks for joining us. If you're watching here on Facebook, thank you. Make sure you like our page. You're on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. Click the bell so you get notified of all of our upcoming videos. And we will catch you guys in another video. Have a fantastic day.